This is Terry with Reggae in Seattle, and I am here with Gramps Morgan from the legendary Grammy Award nominated, Grammy Award winning Morgan Heritage. Yes, man, blessings. Thank you for having me. How's the tour going? It's going good. Rough, but it's good. You know, we're not, you know, 20 years old anymore, you know. So, you know, I, my, my son, for him, it's, it's a, like a field trip, you know. But for us, you know, it's it's a, a big focus to focus on your health and be in the best um, shape you can possibly be. Try to eat good foods, alkaline foods to kind of keep up your energy. But it's been amazing. The Loyalty World Tour, seven weeks um, in Europe, and now we're here on the third or going on the fourth week here in the U.S., and it's been amazing. Um, the summer tour was a lot of festivals from Italy, Spain, to Portugal, to um to where, where else did we go germany it was really really well switzerland and the response for the new album loyalty has been incredible the fans are showing their loyalty with coming out from morgan heritage absolutely i mean I've, you can't for ask for anything better that after 25 almost 30 years that fans are still coming out and purchasing a ticket for 10 or 15 or 20 dollars to say okay, I'm here to support Morgan Heritage. And that's why, you know, we always reference our fans as the loyal the loyal royals because Beyonce calls her fans the beehive. Right. So we call our fans the loyal royals, God, to maintain and, and be in this business for, for so long and still have fans that want to hear Morgan Heritage sing and play reggae music for them. That's a, a rare and it's a blessing. So we, we love our fans. It, it's a, I, what I can tell you is this, two things. When the concert was announced back in May, I just immediately bought my tickets because that's what I do. But also, whenever I go to Jamaica at least once a year and I go on reggae cruises, I do all that. But I can tell you this, whenever I'm getting ready to do anything reggae and I need to build a playlist, one of your songs is on my playlist that I just love. I, I want to know, which one do you think it is? I don't know. It depends on where you're going. Um, it could be Down by the River probably, you know, as, as a good go-to song to make you very happy. Well, I'm going to tell you it is Brooklyn and Jamaica. Oh. <laughs> I took it way back, way back. Yeah. Yes, that song is always on my playlist. Always, always. So you, I've heard it mentioned where you call yourself uh, Jamaican. And I, we know that your father was, uh, was a musician himself. How did you, still is, exactly. Uh, do How did you stay in touch with your Jamaican roots growing up in America? Well, that comes from the upbringing, you know. If I was Indian, then, you know, we would have lots of curry and, and beautiful clothing and jewelry, and it's part of the culture. So, you know, we were born in Brooklyn and raised in Springfield, Massachusetts, and got went to school from kindergarten to 12th grade all in Springfield, Massachusetts. So we were a very multicultural group of Italians and Polish and Vietnamese people. And so it's a, it was a very diverse um, upbringing. But at home, it was like you were in Jamaica. And you know, once you came to the front door, you dropped everything at the front door, you know. But we learned how to speak proper English and learn how to, to do math and social <laughs> studies and all these things going outside the door. So the, 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 the upbringing was very, very solid. And we attribute our mothers and our father and our grandmother for saying to my dad, get these kids out of Brooklyn, New York, and get them to Springfield, Massachusetts. That when we started to understand ourselves and discover ourselves, then it was time that we could handle a very rough city like Brooklyn, New York, and that was after 12th grade. But in every summer, we'd go back and forth between Springfield, Massachusetts, and New York City. When you were children, did you go, did you visit Jamaica? Um, yeah, man, when we were young, um, we went as babies. I don't remember a lot from them, but I, people tell me the stories that well, I used to be on the riverside. And, you know, but after um, we graduated high school, my dad just got to a point where he wanted to move and say, yo, I, I, I want to... I want to go back to Jamaica. I want to move. And we were like, all right, let's go. What do you think you're going to say? No. <laughs> right. um, and we moved with him. And 
naturally our habitat just fell into music so we started working with people like King Jammies and Bobby Digital, Fatis Burrell and that's you know naturally we fell into music because that's what we do you know it's like it. Listen, music is in your roots, it's in your blood, it's in your name, Morgan Heritage. But you know, the island, listen, I'm American. I've been to 30 countries, but let me tell you something. Only one time have I left a country, and I was crying as I was leaving, and that was Jamaica. Yeah, Jamaica's a special place. I mean, it's a country where I call for the people, by the people, because if you pay attention to the other things that Jamaica has to offer, it will probably make you question or make you worry and you know sometimes you hear some things about Jamaica but when you go there you're like what are they talking about you know every country has their problems every country in the world has their problems but if I could live anywhere in the world full time without touring and without that has food fruit organic fruit the sea the river um the mountains the trails and Jamaica has it all tell you this whenever I'm in Jamaica I eat well I don't know how I'm gonna eat I don't know what I'm gonna eat they're gonna bring out some I might have some mango I might have some uh, you know some uh, Kelelu I just I'm just eating fresh I'm eating Ital and that's what I love about the island and just the relaxed vibes yeah we were trying to keep it you know fresh and organic because before it was cool and before there was Whole Foods and Trader Joe's and all these places there was, there was there was the mountain man it was the Rasta man that was saying yo eat Ital We've been that's saying real, that. Real we've real been real saying real that. Real Come real. on, we've been lit. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah you know, so. we know so much originates out of out of Jamaica that is adopted by the U.S. You know, and um, I don't know if it's made better or worse, but it, be, it it becomes a bigger force than what it is, and that's one thing that the island has. It you got this little island, and outside of that, many things just are so much bigger than. I mean, just even with reggae music, you know. Now you have, with, on your loyalty album, you have Africa and Jamaica. Can you tell us about that? I think that I, did I hear that you were talking about moving to Africa? Tell us which country and if this inspired this song, Africa, Jamaica. Well, Africa, Jamaica has been a mentality of ours for a very long time. Growing up in, as children in the organization of the 12 tribe of Israel, growing up as Rastafarian children, you know, in amongst Rastafarians, and you hear this talk of saying, well, one day we want to go back to Africa. We need to go and go, not only to just go back and return to Africa or to make a connection, but go bringing something. Don't ask what Africa can do for you, but what you can do for Africa. Go as a teacher, a pilot, a construction worker, um, a musician, you know, other than to say, or come back with religion or something that is already there or some come back with a trade and we've always grew up we always grew up here in the saying so naturally we started to gravitate to Africa and we said yo we don't want to be the Rastafarian or the black man known not to know their roots and you don't have to necessarily live in Africa but make a connection you know you find the, the, the Indian that they have their roots in India and they go back and forth so it's not a thing to, to alienate yourself from the country that you were born in but it's to build your roots it's to build your lineage know where you come from the Chinese man he knows where he comes from you know if I see your skin I know I think there's a possibility you have some connection to Africa Listen, well, I can tell you for myself that I'm descended on my mother's side from Ashanti because we do know our family lineage there all the way from that African ancestor who was a young male that was kidnapped and brought over from what is the region that's Ghana but from the tribe of Ashanti. And my father, we did the African DNA test, you know. He's, they say Yoruba, but you never know. But we do know our mother's history there and it is important. Um, and what we do know is that also Ghana is calling a lot of these African Americans back to Ghana. They have their 400 year return. Are you familiar with that? I'm part of the committee. Nice. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and I, I am um, the ambassador for Panafest um, in Ghana. I am also a chief in Ghana. Nice. So, um, but we've been doing a lot of things and working with the, the presidency. Nana Kofu Ado, um, been trying to make the awareness, and people like um, Steve Harvey has been making his way. John Sally, and just it's just it's been four hundred years. So you find that even the Jews understand and it's always, they don't necessarily stay in Jerusalem or stay in Israel, but they know who they are. 
you know, it's the same with the German, the Italian, they know who they are. So it's time to black people to build that connection, plug into the Bluetooth, so to speak, and understand and know where you're from because it's going to make that much of a difference. It does yeah. make a difference. And I think that you see a lot more of that. I can tell you just on my end, with a, I hang out with a lot of travelers, a lot of travel bloggers, but a lot of people that are out there. And I know many people who have made that trip to Ghana this year. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to, but um, Ghana, along with a few, quite a few African countries, are on my radar to visit. Um, tell us about um, your Grammy Award win for Strictly Roots. I, that album is on fire. It's a beautiful album. I think we outdid ourselves um, with that album. I think it just covers everything and, and every... Um, reggae no longer is just coming from out of Jamaica. It's coming from out of South Africa. It's been coming out of Africa. Um, of course, Lucky Dubai, Alpha Blonde, um, are major um, contributors to African reggae. And when you talk about... Um, here um, in the United States, there's so many reggae bands and reggae artists rising up. You have Cali Buds from out of Bermuda. So it's not no longer just a Jamaican thing. It has risen out of the island of Jamaica and gone to the four corners of the world. So reggae has gone global. And it's always, always, you talk about people like Sting that um, has always been influenced by reggae He's music. Blondie. Yeah. yeah, so it's it's... Reggae has influenced everyone. If you check artists, you know, they'll say, man, I listened to some reggae. Oh, I remember back in the days with even Shabba Ranks from Shabba won a Grammy. So everyone, for such a small island to be influenced by such a small country, it's a very powerful music. So when we um, made that album, Strictly Roots, everyone was found something on it for themselves, you know. And the collaborations, we had a lot of fun, you know, people like Revolution, um, People like who I'm, um, Jay Boog that was on it. My son Jamiri as an upcoming reggae artist. So it's really an album that I think went over perfectly. And the production and what made it exciting for us is that when we won, we didn't win only as an artist. It was we won on our own record label, which is CTBC Music Group, um, Cool to Be Conscious Music Group. Um, we won as producers. So it was several wins. It's just that the, the Grammy laws have changed today that you don't walk away with three or four trophies. So it's really, really something special to, to have won that and even come back with the Abracadabra album and got nominated for that as well. So we're thankful, and we don't do it just for accolades, but it's thankful when a group such as the Recording Academy can look and say, that's a good reggae album, and you're nominated by your peers. So we're thankful. Well, what I can tell you is, is I think you may have another nomination on your hand with loyalty. I am really feeling what you put on I me. Mean, what you got, slave and slave master. Now I'm just gonna tell you, Africa, Jamaica. That's gonna stay my favorite song because on that album, because it's just hard, right? You know. But I like beach and country as well. Like I said, I featured that a couple of times on Reggae in Seattle. You all have seen that video. So tell us what's next for Morgan Heritage. I'm just continuing to 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 build the bridge from the diaspora home. That's very important. And you mentioned songs like Africa, Jamaica, featuring Stone Boy and Diamond Platinum from Diamond Tanzania. Platinum. It's very important, and it was very historical what we did to bring artists from Jamaica and unite East and West Africa. It doesn't happen normally. So we did a lot of groundbreaking things on that album, on that Africa, Jamaica song is very groundbreaking and you talk about culture entry on the remix of africa we say we with african pride and it's just showing where we are in our career and it's building africa is not just a country it's a continent exactly. so we're inviting all to come and invest not just people of african descent and are because you're black or you're no this is this is a a business we're saying africa is open for business and we are the africans so we welcome germany we welcome canada we welcome the u.s come and help us build it you know even those who had a hand in the transatlantic slave trade we want to tell them say hey here's a way to give back we want to build a train from all the way from south africa to ethiopia come and get involved help us build and we can um, create trade. 
You know what? I just love that message. I love that message. I think we need to leave it right there because that's just perfect. That's so perfect. Thank you for sitting down with us and thank you for what you're doing. What you're doing for making um, the world aware of reggae that is it is not only a music that you can listen when you're on vacation and having a pina colada, but it's you can enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. yeah. It's not Thank a it's you. not a ganja thing. It's, a, it's part of the culture. Yeah, but it's something for your consciousness because the world is in an awakening stage and people are waking up. So we're thankful for that. So check out the song on the album called the "Behold the Awakening" because you know the world is preparing to be in a conscious state of mind. This is Terry with Gramps Morgan, Reggae in Seattle. Peace.